In this short video, we will discuss about the structure and characteristics of an Elasticsearch cluster. A cluster is essentially a group of computers which can be logically seen as one unit and they are trying to accomplish a particular task. Like a Hadoop cluster or a Spark cluster, Elasticsearch also has a cluster based architecture in which many nodes are cooperating and communicating amongst themselves to ser serve the client requests. Let's try to see what the structure of a node in Elasticsearch looks like. But before that, let's revisit what an index in Elasticsearch is. So an index is just a no logical namespace of a collection of documents. Say I have the entire uh, dialogues of a particular movie and I want to index, index them. So this logical namespace of the dialogues of that movie will form my index and they will be stored in Elasticsearch and I can run queries and search uh, my search queries on, on this particular index. So what is a shard? So this, this particular index might be very huge. Therefore, for horizontal scaling, this, this is like split, split horizontally. So essentially, suppose if, if an index has say 1000 documents, it might be that the first 10 documents I keep in one shard, the next 10 I keep in another shard, the next 10 I keep in another shard and these shards are distributed across my entire set of nodes. So I've shown an example here like document 1 to 10 are in one shard, 11 to 20 are in another shard and so on. So in Elasticsearch essentially this shard, every shard is a self-contained Lucene index. So it's 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 a it's an instance of Lucene and it has all the capabilities of Lucene like like it has the indexing capabilities, it has the search capabilities and it is like fully functional Lucene. So Elasticsearch is essentially in the shards each shard is is a Lucene index. So here in the form of a diagram the same thing has been shown in this Elasticsearch box we see that there is this Lucene index box and in, in, in this or, or a shard and e each shard is containing some part of the index documents. So this is how a node is structured and in each node there might be more than one shard. Moving on with our cluster structure, here we see that we can see four nodes here and in each node we see some green boxes and some red boxes. So essentially there are four clusters and each of these green and yellow boxes represent a shard. So each node here is having two shards. The green ones are now representing the P1, P2, P3 and P4 are representing the primary shards and the R1, R2, R3 and R4 are the replica shards. What happens here is this. So these these large scale applications, they run on commodity hardware, which is pretty cheap, but at the same time, it is quite unreliable. Like machines go down all the time and they need to be fixed very promptly. But it might so happen that a certain machine might not be able to brought up, brought back to life very quickly. So what happens is that for robustness and for fault tolerance, each shard is replicated. Here we have shown only one replica of each shard, say P1 is replicated into R1, P2 into R2, P3 into R3 and P4 into R4 and they are spread across the nodes in the Elasticsearch cluster. So even if one of the systems may go down, say the one with P3 and R2 may go down, nonetheless we won't lose the data within P3 because just below that in the other node we have replica R3 which contains the same data as P3 and then this can be made as the primary replica. So even if a node goes down and a primary shard is lost, a replica can be made primary until recovery or it could stay primary for a long time for that matter. So one thing to be um, careful of is that the number of replicas has to be set at the time of cluster. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake here, not at the time of cluster, but at the time of index creation. So at the time of index creation, all the number of replica shards should be decided. 
otherwise what will happen is that if you want to in increase the number of replica shards you will have to go back and re-index all of your data one more thing to note here which we will discuss later on in great detail is that write operations take back take place on the primary shards and they are repeated on the replica shards and read operations can be done either on the replicas or on the primary shards and for the last part of this video let us quickly discuss the types of nodes in elasticsearch cluster so essentially we have a master node which does all the coordination activities across the cluster like it it creates and deletes indexes it keeps track of where where the indexes are it assigns shards to various other nodes it, it does the health check and so many things so essentially the the parts of coordination are done by the master node the data node is the node that holds the data and the indexes and the client node is a someone who is neither the data node nor the master node and essentially acts as a load balancer apart from that we have a co coordination node with which the client makes the first connection so that is it for this video if you find the content of this video helpful please give it a thumbs up give it a like and if you find the content of this channel helpful please subscribe there are many more discussions coming up thank you folks